All right, welcome to this ultimate beginner guide to ICT trading concepts. This video provides a complete overview of the foundational principles in the ICT method, organized for easy understanding. This method can be quite detailed and may feel overwhelming at first. After watching this video, you will know everything you need to know about ICT trading. So without further ado, let's dive into the concepts of swing points and liquidity. First concept we need to grasp is the idea of swing points and a connection to liquidity. Swing points can be either swing lows or swing highs. To identify them, we look for a pattern involving three candles. In a swing high, the middle candle has a lower high on both the left and the right. In a swing low, the middle candle has a higher low on both sides. Understanding swing points is crucial because many retail traders place stop orders just above swing highs or below swing lows, indicating that these areas are rich in liquidity. In a low trade, stop loss and take profit targets are set as sell orders, while on short trade, they are set as buy orders. This brings us to the concept of buy side and sell side liquidity. Just above the swing high, there are many stop orders from short trades, buy stop orders, and buy stop orders from traders looking to enter long positions if the price exceeds the swing high. In IST terminology, this is referred to as buy side liquidity. On the other side, just below swing low, there are numerous stop loss orders from long traders, sell stop orders, and sell stop orders from traders intending to go short if the price drops below the swing low. This area is known as sell side liquidity. Identifying these buy side and sell side liquidity level is a significant aspect of the IST method. Now, let's examine our real price chart to see examples of these liquidity levels in action. Currently, we're looking at GBP USD at the five minute chart. And up here, you see we just created a swing high. Why is this a swing high? Because of a lower high to the left and a lower high to the right. After we made the swing high, we traded lower, lower. And now this low is potentially a swing low if the next candle is making a higher low to the right. After we traded higher, this high can be a swing high where the next candle is creating a lower high to the right. And we don't be trading higher, so same here, this can be a swing high, where now the next candle is making a lower high to the right. Then we trade lower, creating another swing low down here. Why? Higher low to the left, higher low to the right. This is going to be a swing high when the next candle creates a lower high. It doesn't. Trades higher, breaking this swing high. Now here we create another swing high, lower high to the left, lower high to the right. And now this low can be a swing low where the next candle creates a higher low. It doesn't, but it does right here. And price goes higher. Where does it go? You see a swing high right there. And here you have three swing highs in a row. So next to swing highs and swing lows, when you see multiple swing highs in the same area, this brings us to the concept of equal highs and equal lows. In this chart, you see multiple swing highs clustered together. And in the IST method, we call it equal highs. At the bottom here, you have multiple swing lows clustered together. And we call those equal lows. The difference between equal highs and lows and old highs and lows is that old highs and lows are isolated, triggering liquidity. But the equal highs, there's a swing high created right here, taking out all the buy side liquidity that was resting above here. It triggers liquidity to go down again. And the same happens down here. Price creates a swing low after taking all this sell side liquidity, triggering liquidity to go up again, taking out an old high triggers liquidity again to then go lower, taking out this low. And what you see right here, where price takes out a sell side liquidity pool and then fails to displace lower but goes higher, is called market manipulation, meaning the triggering of liquidity in order to deceptively induce retail traders to one side of the market, but then it goes the other way. Still on the topics of highs and lows, we can identify other significant types on the charts, such as previous week highs and lows, previous day high and lows, previous session high and lows, and even intraday time frame high and lows. We will revisit these concepts when we're discussing daily bias later in this video. Another key concept of the IST method is the idea of premium and discount. To grasp this, we first need to understand the concept of a range, which is simply the space between a swing low and a swing high or vice versa. For illustration, let's consider the range from a swing low to a swing high. To define the premium and discount zones, we divide the range into two equal parts. The upper zone is known as premium and the lower zone is called discount. This applies similarly when the range is from a swing high to a swing low, indicating a downward price movement. When seeking long trade opportunities, we aim to enter the trade in discount of the zone, especially if other factors support the trade idea. The deeper into discount we enter, the better the risk to reward ratio, with the stop placed below the swing low and the target at the swing high. For downward price movements, we measure the range from a swing high to a swing low and aim to enter short in the premium zone. The higher into the premium we enter, the more favorable the risk to reward ratio, with the stop loss at the swing high and the target at the swing low. 
This concept of premium and discount is straightforward, but crucial when considering other elements like optimal trade entry for value gaps, order blocks, and a combination of other factors that generate your trade setup. Directly related to the concept of premium and discount zones is the idea of OTE, which stands for optimal trade entry. OTE refers to a specific Fibonacci retracement zone that falls within the discount zone for a long trade and within the premium zone for a short trade. This particular Fibonacci retracement zone ranges from 0.62 to 0.79, with the midpoint at 0.705, being especially significant. In this illustration showing the OTE for a short trade, the zone falls within the premium zone. It's crucial to observe how price action interacts with the three levels in the zone, particularly with the midpoint of the OTE retracement level. The same concept applies for a long trade. In this illustration, you notice that the zone clearly falls within the discount zone. Observing how price action responds to the level within this zone, especially the midpoint of the retracement level, is just as important as we saw at the long trade OTE. Let's look at some specific examples to illustrate these concepts further. Currently, we're looking at Euro US dollar at the four hour chart and the swing high and the swing low of this current range are already marked out. So the first step we need to do is mark out the premium and discount. The difference between the swing high and the swing low is your current range and the top side is your premium, the bottom side is your discount zone. So now we have premium, discount and the OTE levels. So we want to see what price does when it reaches one of the three OTE levels. And remember, the higher up into the range, so in the short trade, the higher up into premium, the better your risk reward will be. So playing two candles forward, we see the price comes into the top of the OTE area, deep into premium, and the body is respecting the OTE area. Let's see what the next candle does. The next candle does this as well. And then we see an energetic move lower, reacting from that OTE area. And a few candles later, we see that price goes down. If you would have taken a trade from the midpoint of the OT area, with your stop above the swing high or take profit at the swing low, you would have a 1 to 2 4 risk to reward, which is pretty decent. And later we see that price has still some more down movement in it, but you already got some nice profit in. Currently, we're looking at NASDAQ at the 4 hour chart. And already, and its swing low and swing highs are marked out from this range. So now let's see how premium and discount looks like. And if you want to go long, you want to go long in discount of the range. And also you want to long inside OTE in that area. So when you place your Fibonacci from swing low to swing high, now you have your OT area. So you want price to come back to this area to take a long. So let's see what price does when we are there. So you can take a trade from the 0.61 area, but preferably the deeper into discount, the better your risk to reward will be. And we're going again, going to focus on taking a trade from the midpoint of the OT area with our stop loss below the swing low and our take profit above the swing high for this time at one, two, three, five. You see that price comes back into the discount of the range. We touch it, we go a little under the midpoint of the OT area and then price moves higher, giving you some nice profits. A key concept in the IST method is the fair value gap, which is a three candle pattern that shows a gap between the first and the third candle shadows. Let's first explore the bullish fair value gap, also known as a busy which stands for buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. In this pattern, the first candle's high does not overlap with the third candle's low, creating a gap. For comparison, if there is an overlap between the upper shadow of the first candle and the lower shadow of the third candle, as shown on the right, there is no fair value gap. Similarly, the bearish fair value gap, often referred to as a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, occurs when the first candle's low does not overlap with the third candle's high, creating a gap. As similarly to the bullish example, if there's no overlap, there's no fair value gap. An important detail about the value gaps is the concept of consequent encroachment, which refers to the midpoint of the fair value gap, or the 50% retracement of the gap. Fair value gaps can act as zones of support and resistance. Observing how price interacts with the limits of the value gaps and the consequent encroachment line is crucial. In the ideal scenario for a bullish value gap, the price pierces the upper limit and closes above it indicating respect of the gap. A similar reaction at the consequent encroachment, where the price pierces the midpoint and close above, can also indicate respect for the gap. In the bearish version, the principle is exactly the same, but reversed. Price can also disrespect the fair value gap, leading to what is called a inversion fair value gap, where the price tests the gaps on the other side and then moves away. This concept is similar to the classic test of support and resistance lines. The concept is the same for both bearish and bullish inverse value gaps. And beyond for value gaps, the IST method also includes concepts like volume imbalances and gaps. 
Avoidment balance occurs when there is a gap between the open and close of two candles with overlapping wicks. The gap is in the bodies. A gap, however, occurs when there is a space between the high and lows of two candles with no trading activity between these points. In the case of a bullish gap, this gap exists between the high of the first candle and the low of the second candle, and the bearish gap, it exists between the low of the first candle and the high of the second candle. In this illustration, you can compare the bullish versions of their value gap, volume balance, and the gap side by side. With their value gap, there is a gap between the wicks of candle 1 and 3. In a volume balance, there is a gap between the bodies of the two candles. In a gap, there is no trading activity between two candles. Now, let's look at the real world examples of our value gaps, volume balances, and gaps to see the concepts in action. Here we are at the one hour time frame on DXY. And in this move up, we have created a gap. There is no trading activities between these two candles. After we run higher, we can expect a move back into OTE discount of the range. And also now there's an overlapping part with a gap. Price comes back into the OT area where also our gap is and reacts from it. In this price action, we now created a bearish for value gap. So let's see if price respects it and trades lower or we disrespect it and then this becomes an inversion for value gap. It disrespects it. So this is now becoming an inversion for value gap. And with this candle's close next to the inversion for value gap, we created a new bullish for value gap. So now in this movement upwards, we've seen a retracement into OTE and the gap. Then we have a big move upwards, disrespecting a bearish for value gap, making it an inversion for value gap. And now we want to see a retest in both the area of the inversion value gap, but also the newly created bullish for value gap to then trade higher again. The next candle does that and then moves higher. Now you look at a four hour chart on DXY. And we just had a big movement upwards, creating a for value gap between the high of this candle and the low of the third candle. And you see how the bodies are respecting the for value gap to go upwards. A bullish for value gap should do that. In the movement higher, we created a bullish volume imbalance. And again, this should push price higher. So you see price goes higher, comes back to the volume imbalance and then trades away. Another key concept in the IST method is the order block, which can be categorized into two types, high probability order blocks and low probability order blocks. High probability order blocks are associated with large body candles, while low probability order blocks are characterized by small body candles with more prominent wicks. Let's first explore the high probability order block. The bullish variation of the order block is formed by a large body bearish candle or a series of large body bearish candles that sweep sell side liquidity and then lead to a break of an old high known as a break of structure. The order block is located at the open of the large body bearish candle that sweeps the sell side liquidity. Price of the retrace back to the order block before continuing higher. The bearish variation of an order block is formed by a large body bullish candle or a series of large body bullish candles that sweep buy side liquidity and then lead to a break of an old low, also referred to as a break of structure. The order block is found at the open of the large body bullish candle that sweeps the buy side liquidity and price typically retraces to this level before moving lower. High probability order blocks often emerge from expanding pivot formations, where a lower low is followed by a higher high in the case of a bullish order block, or a higher high is followed by a lower low in the case of a bearish order block. Low probability order blocks, on the other hand, are formed by small body candles with more prominent wicks and occurs in the middle of a price movement. This can also be divided into bullish and bearish variations. In the bullish variation of a low probability order block, a small body bearish candle is found in the middle of a price movement that is primarily bullish. The order block is located in the space between the high and the open of the small body bearish candle. Price often retraces to this order block before continuing onwards. In the bearish variation, a small body bullish candle is present in the middle of a price movement that is mostly bearish. The order block sits between the low and the open of the small body bullish candle and price typically retraces to this level before resuming the downward movement. Now let's look at the high and the low probability order block in action. In this example, we're going to look at the formation of a high probability order block. We have sell side liquidity down here. We see that price is sweeping the liquidity with some aggression and have an aggressive candle upwards. In this move, we created a swing high. When price breaks that swing high, we have a break of structure. The second criteria for an order block after taking sell side liquidity. We take structure right here. So now we can identify this big down close candle to be a bullish order block. Now you want price to come back to that area. The body is respecting the order block and then go higher. If the price comes back here, the wick go into the mean threshold of the order block. The mean threshold is the 50% of the body. Also, the 50% retracement of the order block is a key area. The bodies are closing above the area and there you see price going upwards, respecting the bullish order block. 
And when we analyze this example, you see the price comes back to the order block four times before making the move higher, giving you enough time to enter this trade. And in this next example, we're looking at a low probability order block. We are very bearish right here, anticipating lower prices. And in those lower prices, we see a up close candle being created, making this a low probability order block. Marking out the open of the candle, and what you see most of the time in low probability order blocks, very trending conditions, price just come to the order block and then moves away very aggressively. You see price comes back up here to the top of the order block, but the bodies are closing way below it and then we go lower and lower. To identify the best trades, the final ICT concept we will explore in this beginner's guide is the daily bias. Daily bias is a way to determine which direction the market is likely to go based on the previous day high and low and by observing how the price reacts at these levels. Let's start with the basic idea of a bullish daily bias. Suppose you begin by marking out the high and low of a particular day. If the next day's price action breaks and close above the previous day high, this indicates a bullish bias for the following day. Another instance of a bullish bias occurs when the price breaks below the previous day's low but fails to close lower. In this scenario, you can expect the next day to be bullish or at least for the price to reach the previous day high. For bearish daily bias, the logic is similar but in the opposite direction. If the price breaks and closes below the previous day low, a bearish bias is established for the next day. Additionally, if the price breaks above the previous day's high but fails to close above it, this also suggests a bearish bias for the following day. In this case, the expectation is for the next day to be bearish or at least to test the previous day low. Like many other concepts in ICT, the daily bias is best understood through practice. So let's hop into the charts to see this concept applied in real time. When applying this framework, you want to mark out the highs and the lows of the previous day. In this example, see the price took out previous day high, but fails to close below it, making the next candle, the bias, to the downside, till at least the low of this day. Updating the highs and lows, our bias is to be to the downside. And it did, but we trade lower, but we fail we fails to close below it, we closed higher, that means the next day, the bias is higher and at least towards this day's high. Updating the yeah, I don't know. And we took out the high and we closed above the high. So the next day, we expect price to go higher for at least this day's high. We did. And we closed above the high. So that means for the day after, we still have the bullish bias. And we took the high, but we failed to close over it. So that the next day, we anticipate to go for this candle's low. And it did. And it closed below the low. So... The next day, we anticipate price to go for the candle's low again, the bearish bias. And it does, taking out the low, but it fails to close lower, it goes higher. So the day after, we anticipate higher prices again. We do, but we fail to close over it. So the next day, we anticipate for price to take out the low. And it does, but it fails to close lower. So now we anticipate the high of the previous day to be taken with a bullish bias. And we take it and we close over it so the next day we anticipate again higher prices and then we displace higher and see what we did here we slowed down inside a bullish value gap before trading higher again in all of these days the bias was correct using this framework in trading nothing is 100 percent, so this will fail sometimes but most of the time it will be very reliable you can use the same concept intraday on the lower time frames as well but keep in mind the lower the time frame you go the less reliable this framework will work the daily time frame, in general, is more reliable than a one minute. This wraps up our beginner guide to the IST method. Although the method extends beyond what we have covered, these essential concepts can be immediately applied to your trading practices. If you're interested in exploring further, you can find more detailed content in the free beginner bootcamp and the 2024 mentorship in my school group linked in the video description. And that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please support the channel by liking and subscribing, turning on your notifications, leaving your thoughts in the comments, and sharing this with your trading community and friends. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.